Psalms 115. Who gets the glory? God, self, or idols? Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. For thy mercy and for thy true sake, giving God the glory. There are many Christians out there, they give themselves the glory on what they have done, what they have accomplished. It's all to the name of God and only to God. Matthew says that, he quotes Jesus, you, you already received your reward if you get among men. I'd rather get my reward, my reward from God than man. God's reward will be eternal. For thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. So you give God the glory for his mercy and for his truth. I hope you have a King James Bible. I hope you have the way of salvation as Jesus Christ of the Bible, not any man-made Jesus. Who said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Unto the name of the Lord Jesus Christ should be your glory. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now thy God? And there are Christians and there have been Jews, the Old Testament, by their lives. Oh, you know, you're a particular person of, of the Lord. You know, you're the man of God. And you've lived such a life that you got the glory. Everybody got the glory, but God got the glory. And then when there's troubles and problems in your life, God's not there for you. And they look at you, well, where's your God? Where's this wonderful God that people speak about? But our God is in heaven. He has done whatsoever he has pleased. All in holiness and righteousness. He never sins. He never does anything wicked. That's our God of the Bible. That's our Savior. That's the God of the Hebrews. That is the God, the Creator. That is the God that, that has all powers, all mighty, all everything. All holy. Now, here comes idols. See, you can give yourself the glory instead of God, verse 1. Or you can give God the glory, now the idols, verse 3, uh, 4, excuse me. Their idols are silver, money. Silver is a metal that can be used for many applications. And gold, money. Jewelry. The work of men's hands. Oh, uh oh, there's man. There's self. The idols are a man made object. Made in China. Made in the USA. Made in Indonesia. Made in uh, Hong Kong. Made in. Uh, or maybe if it's like a painting, maybe it even has the guy's signature at it. Well, who gets the glory, man, through his idol? It's not giving God the glory. They have mouths. Oh, okay. But they speak not. They're dumb. Now, you got to get the Bible definition of dumb. That doesn't mean stupid. The Bible definition of dumb means they're unable to speak. How many idols are in churches with mouths and they worship them and yet they don't speak? How many? I guess you would call a dumb God if he can't speak with a mouth. How are you going to learn anything if he doesn't speak? Eyes, they ha eyes have they, but they see not. They're blind. And Jesus, in his life ministry, there were people who were dumb who he gave the voice back. There were people who were blind, and he gave their sight back yet, but Jesus couldn't touch no idol. 
and give it a mouth to speak and e eyes to see. Impossible. But I know a character that's coming up in the future who's going to have an image and he's going to give power to that image to speak. You know, you can go to any of these theme parks and they've got a mechanical uh, Abraham Lincoln or a mechanical whoever, and they'll speak to you. It's not their voice, it's a recording. But wait till Satan takes his idol and gives it a voice. Won't you think every Catholic will be happy that day? And it's not Jesus and a piece of toast or a statue crying blood. It's, it's speaking. That's what they want. Their answer to prayer to those idols would be that thing would speak. I know an idol that spoke much words without opening his mouth. And the Roman Catholic Church had to get rid of him. St. Christopher. He was supposed to be the patron saint of automobiles, but they kept finding a statue in the graveyard of automobiles from car accidents. They had to fire him from his job. He wasn't doing too good of a job. Finding St. Christopher uh, in a bunch of wrecks from accidents in the junkyard. I guess he said something. Next. They have ears, but they hear not. Uh-oh. You mean they're deaf? Why do you pray to something that can't hear you? Run your Roman Catholic friend of Psalms 115 verse uh, 6 and say, Do you pray to that thing? Well, how can he hear you? He can't hear you. I wonder if uh, that servant there in the garden, when he Peter chopped off his ear, I wonder if he could hear anymore. But I know when Jesus picked up that ear and put it back on, however he did it, do you think the guy heard again? I believe so. So the life ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, from birth to his death on the cross and being raised from the grave, testifies against idols. Through the humans that he made. You want me to keep going? Noses have they, but they smell not. Well, that's one miracle. It's not recorded in the Bible that Jesus healed any noses. But do you know what John said? He said, if we could write everything that Jesus Christ did, Volumes upon volumes we could not comprehend what all Jesus done. Do you think maybe he healed some of their allergies or something like that? I don't know. We'll move on. We don't need to stick with noses. Too many Baptists have their noses in other people's business. So we'll pass on from noses to verse 7. They have hands, but they handle not. Wasn't there a guy who had an arm that was withered? And he said, stretch forth our arm? Wait a minute. Hands, but they handle not. How many statues have you seen of a woman holding a child? So you see, by putting a child in the arms of an idol, they're trying to defy the Bible. You take a statue that has their, their arms down at their side, their hands against their, their thighs, and you hand it something to hold, it's going to drop on the floor and make a mess. It's not going to reach out its arms. But I want the Antichrist image is going to point up and say, that person don't have the mark. All right. We'll go on. This one would be interesting. Feet they have, but they walk not. Wouldn't you imagine you, you open the doors of some of these churches, you see their statues running around, having a, you know, chasing each other around, and having, oh, here it comes.
Do you know the great imitation of Psalms 115? What about these movies they make for kitties with toys that come to life and have mouths that speak not yet, but the mouths speak? Have eyes, but they don't see, but in the movies they see. Have ears they can't hear, but the ears do hear. And noses they have, but they can't smell, but in the movies they can smell. And hands they handle not, but in the movies they can handle, and they have and they're walking about. Hollywood's trying to get you ready for something that the Bible says an idol cannot do. Mm -hmm. Neither speak they through their throat. Well, that's something we learn from God be created. You don't speak out your mouth. It comes from your, your voice box. I don't know all the characteristics, but if you do a study, you'll find out your voice comes through your throat. With your tongue working with your teeth. And they have a throat, but they can't speak. I know an image coming up pretty soon is going to speak. They that make them are like unto them. The makers of the idols. What is this verse saying? The makers of the craftsmen have no life and are no senses. No feeling, no touch, no smell, no taste, no hearing. I think I may have forgot one in there. He's greedy. He wants money. When Paul is arrested, one of the trips with the, 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 the shrines of Diana, what was those people's first majority concern and complaint? Buy there you go. People weren't going to buy their It wasn't Diana. They weren't going to buy the junk. Why we're trying to tell Henry today with with shopping in the grocery store, they want you to buy their junk and they'll sell it any way they can to get you to buy the junk. Because if you didn't buy the junk and sit on the shelves, then they wouldn't make no money. And God says these people that make the idols, they have no life and they have no senses. Just like the ones, the things they make. Take an idol and smash it on the floor and see if it says, ouch. And then pick it up and bring it to the emergency room. And better yet, take it to a Roman Catholic hospital emergency room. See you flip their beads over that one. So is everyone that trusts in them. So if you trust in those idols, the Bible says, Mr. Catholic, Mrs. Catholic, you have no life and you have no senses. You're dead in trespasses and sin. You're incapable of having thought. You're incapable of movement. You're incapable of communication. Oh, Israel. Uh-oh. Right now in the paragraph. Oh, Israel. You mean not America? Trust thou in the Lord. Now this is this verse 9. And we're talking about who gets the glory. This is a nation. Israel. Trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. That's a nation. As a nation, Israel is to worship and give glory to God. Number two, verse 10. O house of Aaron. That's the priest.
You know, Israel was divided into a church, state, religion. The priest helped the king, and the king helped the priest. Matter of fact, the priest came before the king. The king was was God. Until they wanted a king like the nations. And look who they ended up with. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Same thing as a nation. It's just God's name. And hey, there's the nation and there's the priest. So when the priest tried to come in and interfere with the nation, he violates the scripture. Because first of all, those priests that have been worshiping these dollies, these idols, are not of Aaron. Imagine a Peter Pollock who changes his stupid name saying that he's of the house of Aaron. Go back and make some Papa Gino uh, Italian sausage pizza. Get out of the religion. Your craft is spaghetti, not religion. You know, you lost your noodle. I mean, if you really want to have a church based upon a Pollock in, in, in Italy, follow the bouncing meatball. A priest is of the house of Aaron for Israel. Okay. Number three, verse 11. Ye, individuals. Nation, priests, individuals that fear the Lord. All right, you fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. Fear and trust goes hand in hand. I fear the Lord, but if you don't trust the Lord, your fears will go to something else and not God. You need to have fear to have trust, and you need trust to have fear. He is their help and their shield. So Israel as a nation, the priest class, and the individuals have the help and the shield of God. Now, if you were to run that, somewhere it would be God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but I don't necessarily know. Well, these are how things work in threes in the Bible, don't they? I don't have all the answers. Paragraph. The Lord has been mindful of us, Israel. God's mind is on Israel. What, of, what about Adolf Hitler in the World War II? Yeah, his mind was on Israel. Israel was his son, is his son. And those Jews were defying God, their father. So God had to get the rod out. Proverbs says something to the fact is, if you love your children, you will chastise them. If you don't chastise them, you hate them. Don't argue with me, argue with the Bible. He will bless the house of Israel, nation. He will bless the house of Aaron, the priest. He will bless them, individuals, that fear the Lord, both small and great individuals. Don't tell me God's done with the Jew. You know what their great blessing is going to be? Is It's yet future. When their Messiah comes riding on horseback and picks them up. And delivers them from Satan. And all the nations that did treat the Jews right are welcome into the millennial kingdom as a sheep. And those that don't treat the nation of Israel go into the lake of fire. Hell. He said hell. Lolly, lolly, get your Prozac here. Okay. Yes. Verse 14, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children, Jews. I 
I know God knows, but could you ever put a number on how many Jews there's been? I bet you it's far more than the Italians. I bet you it's far more than the Babylonians. I bet you it's far more than all the Japheth. I bet you it's even far more than all the Hamites. I bet you there's more of them. I mean, they talk about China and the population. I bet there's been more Jewish people than all the Chinese. Just taking a guess by, by the word of God. Ye, the Jews. So you can't come running through here and say America. Because it says in verse 9, I-S-R-A-E-L. Now, if you want to apply the application to a Christian, verse 14, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. If you do what God tells you to do, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel, he'll give you fruit of children, spiritual children. Okay, you can apply that. You go out and witness and support missionaries and all that. I guarantee you got more and more and you got children and children. And what? You have a family of what? 15, 20 people that reject you and hate you because you turned to Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what God gives you in return? So you can apply that spiritually. Application to the church, but it's to Israel. You know, there's a possibility that in the new earth, the Jews will be able to reproduce and have more Jewish babies and, and, and children. Not Christians. For we're as the angels and not given to marriage. And we don't we won't have sexual relations. In fact, the Bible says we're all gonna look like Jesus Christ. There will be no when we when the rapture happens, that's it. There's no more Christians ever to be made again. When the rapture happens, that's the end of the Christian fruit tree. And the nuts will be left behind. Because a nut is not a fruit. I know there's some fruit cakes in the Christians, but... Christians won't reproduce after the rapture. That's it. It's done. I believe, and some don't believe. I don't believe Gentiles will be saved outside their conduct to Israel. And the Jews have to endure to the end. Why? Look at all the blessings God has given them. Look at all the times God has repented of, of, of judging them. Even after the, the, the temple that Solomon built has been destroyed. Yet, he brought them back to rebuild and to resettle them in the land. And they sinned again. And, and in the, the new temple, they crucified their Lord and Savior, their Messiah. Yet, he still loves them as going to call some back. All right. Verse 15. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. So that verse cannot apply to somebody who believes in evolution. I don't care what age you are in. Now, I guarantee there's probably Jewish scientists out there who do and support and work with the theory of evolution. Matter of fact, one of the popes, let's go back to the idols and all that, I won't give his name, but it has been quoted to say that Genesis is a myth. Wow. You can't believe the first book. Go pop yourself around somewhere else. You can't believe Genesis 1. And you stand as the victor of Christ, as, as the ambassador of the Holy God, and you can't believe what his word says. It says, Lord, which made the heaven and earth. God is my creator. The heaven. Even the heavens are the Lord's. Okay. Did... NASA and the Russian Space Agency, did they get in their prayer and say, Lord, can we have permission to go out there in outer space? 
Man's dominion what? But the earth has he given to the children of men. The earth is the man's domain, not the heaven. We know from scriptures that the powers and principalities and Satan is out there in the universe. That is not where man belongs. You know how do you know that? There's no oxygen out there. Man needs oxygen. God has, oh, what can I say? God has made it so man cannot survive in our space. So man has artificial oxygen. Man has artificial light. They're getting ready for the artificial price. But the earth has he given to the children of men. So they can outrageously charge you for a house. I don't think so. But uh, in Proverbs says that for the price of a land, uh, sheep or something like that, goats. I don't think God ever intended man to, to be rich off the, you know, Especially sell someone a home that you know has been infested with termites or got problems that you don't mention. But the earth is for man. It doesn't say Jews either. It says the children of men. And then you read the scriptures. There are boundaries of three children. Ham, Japheth, and Shem. And with all that, there is one specific boundary. The land of Israel. And guess who the United Nuts fight over more for a piece of land? I mean, they can fight over anything else. Now, the dead praise not the Lord. As far as the Old Testament sense, I can assume after Abraham died, they went to Abraham's bosom. What it was before Abraham died or... Whatever, I don't know, paradise. We are told that Lazarus was sleeping. We were told that Samuel was asleep, resting. And that's where the Jehovah Witnesses will get soul sleep. But Paul says as far as a born-again Christian, after Christ has arose from the grave, and many of the saints arose with him, and we're in Jerusalem, as far as us today, when we die, Paul says to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. When we die, we praise God. In Luke 16, if a lost man dies, he wakes up in hell. The Old Testament did not have those revelations. They didn't know anything about Abraham's bosom. So when a cult runs the verse seventeen, see that and the dead, you know, no one. So no, you don't know what the Bible says. That was a limited knowledge of the psalm writer. He had been not revealed by God. And yes, they, the Old Testament saints, went to a place where they slept and they didn't praise God. Well, I bet you when Jesus came walking across that gulf down in the center of the earth. And then when, when he wakes them up, I guarantee that thief that was on the cross, I guarantee he was jumping up and down praising the Lord. I bet you he had a testimony. He's there. He's there. There's the one that died on the cross. There's the one that told me he's coming. He's here. He's here. Where's the other thing? Oh, that's, he's over there. Shut up, believe us, you moron. So, and they that go down into silence. Yeah, it was silence then. Not today. You imagine, you're, I mean, I've heard all kinds of accounts, and I'm not going to exclude a true born-again Bible-believing Christian. Now, I have family seen family die, save, and, you know, they saw angels. And I, I don't know. I, 
But can you just imagine you're laying in a hospital bed, and your family's around you, you're just laying there, and you just start hearing in the distance, in you know, whatever state you're in, oh, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 and it just gets louder, and it just gets louder, and it gets crystal clearer, and it gets crystal clearer, and I believe, this is what I believe, and you don't have to believe it, but next thing you know, you're on your knees. And this part, you don't have to believe, but when the disciples came to Jesus, they were kneeling at his feet, and you open up your eyes, and there's a pair of feet looking at you, ten toes. You're, you're, what on earth? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. You're in that split second. There you are. You're looking at feet. And they got holes in them. And man, you're just wetting your spirit. I mean, it's true. It's finally here. I have finally seen Jesus. I'm falling in glory. I'm glad I'm out of that hospital bed. I am rejoicing with the Lord. You ain't going to be silent. And you cry out to Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much. And then, and then you just humbly lift your head. And there are two hands there with me. Oh, man, glory to God. It's real. It's real. And you just wrap yourself around them. And Jesus went, hey, I got other saints I got to create. No, Lord, no, no, no. You ain't going to be silent then. No way. If you were a preacher, oh, I don't believe in saying amen. You'd be saying amen at that point. I am. But we will bless the Lord. I'll be blessing the Lord when I die. I'll be blessing the Lord if I don't die and get raptured up. I don't know if I'm going to have a sudden realization that, you know, I'm afraid of heights. Oh, wait a minute. I'm being called up to heaven. I don't have no more fears. But we will bless the Lord from this time forward, or the fourth. What a time. I've been backslidden on the Lord. All right, from this time forth, bless the Lord. Make him happy. Oh, I... I'm saved, but I really haven't done for, done much for the Lord. This time for start serving the Lord and make him happy. Listen, you haven't died. The rapture hasn't happened. This time for and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Start now. And if you are doing and have been doing it, do it more and more this time for We ought to, and I'm, I'm guilty of this, I don't. We ought to be praising the Lord more than we praise the Lord the day before. And I don't. And I'll admit that. I'll be the first one to admit that and ask the Lord to put that under the blood. He's giving you a brand new day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall be grumpy and complain and gripe and, 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 and worry all day long. No. This is a day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. Praise the Lord. Why do you praise the Lord? Because you ain't got a dead idol. Can you imagine dancing around something stupid that can't do nothing for you? That thing is so stupid, you've got to clean it yourself. And did you know, that, I don't know, I know my children are not in the Roman Catholic. I grew up in the Roman Catholic. And some of you out there, if you listen to Roman Catholic, did you know you get penance if you wash Mary in a half shell in your yard and keep her clean? That No, that is a proven thing. The, whole, the church will give you time off of whatever, something, give you give you good good ribbon on, hello, my name is Stiley, name tag in heaven, something like that. If you keep Mary, let her keep herself clean. What am I doing looking at another husband's, uh, excuse me, what am, I, what am I doing looking at another man's wife to clean her? Man, if she can't clean herself, either there's no life in it, 
or and I'm not making fun of those people, or it's it's retarded and needs help. I'll take a human being that's retarded. Okay, yeah, that's that's something that you know that, that you can't do for. They need help. But you got this stupid thing that you can't do nothing for itself, man. Let it sit in a garbage dump with all the trash and seagulls and all that. Let it let it come home. You know, in the Old Testament when they had that Dagon and they put the Ark of the Covenant in there and they came in and Dagon's down the floor. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And they picked him up. Why couldn't he get up himself? They picked him up. They go in the next day. He, he's missing his arm and legs. He lost his head. Is that your God? Israel one time, they're out in the battle, and they whipped the enemy's butt. And what did those morons go and do? They went and gathered their gods. Hey! Hey! Look at my ring from the losing football team. Look, they lost eight in the championship. See that? Oh, you got all their sports cards? Give me the whole set. And yet, you say that's foolish, and you worship something where you should be worshiping God. Oh, I worship God. Oh, yeah, you do. Small g, old d, the God of this world. You can worship God, you can worship self, or you can worship idols. And the end of this verse, 66618, six, six, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? It says, praise the Lord. Don't receive the mark, praise the Lord. Isn't that an interesting 18? Let's look at verse 13 of rebellion. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. That is an opposite of rebellion verse. <laughs> That's rebelling against the God of this world. That's a rebellion against the church. That's a rebellion against religion, verse 13, to serve the God of the Bible. How do you like that one? Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops. 